Hey everyone, this is Zach Hample in Midtown Manhattan. As some of you already know, my family owns a big old bookstore, which you can see behind me across the street. It's actually the oldest independent bookstore in New York City, and I just thought it'd be fun to give you a quick tour of the place. And yes, there's a whole lot of baseball stuff there, which I'll show you in just a bit, but man, for right now, it is freezing out here, so let's head on inside. So the Argosy Bookstore has been around since 1925. That's when my grandfather started it, and it's been in this location on East 59th Street since 1964. This building is six floors plus a basement, so there is tons of stuff to see. As for the main floor here, there's stuff ranging from dollar books and bargain prints and autographs all the way up to sets of fancy leather bindings, display cases with rare books, paintings high up on the walls. There's just all kinds of stuff and people love to come in here and just spend hours looking around. This is one of the coolest sections in the whole store, down here on the first floor. These books are very, very old. Just pulled one off because it looked like maybe it's the oldest one. And you can see on the title page, 1670 right here. So there might be books that are even older. I know there's a bunch from the 1700s. Just pretty amazing stuff. Before we head upstairs, just want to give you a quick look at this huge browsing room in the basement. We have about 40,000 books here, lots of different subjects, many novels, a lot of biographies, but other stuff as well. And as you'll see very soon as we go through the building, this is just the beginning. Up here on the second floor, the gallery, tons of prints and maps and some posters as well. I want to introduce you to someone named Richard, who is actually in charge of our book restoration and repair. It's pretty amazing to see what he does. And then what I'm going to do is kind of just with my finger, you know, it kind of solidifies it and then I can shape it. Richard has been here at the store since 1987, so I'm, I'm curious, what is the most valuable book that you think you've worked on? That's a good question. I've had, I've had a few actually. Um, I can recall a, uh, a first edition Dickens Christmas Carol which was owned by Charles Dickens himself, and it was signed by Dickens, so uh, it was extremely valuable, and I had to do a little touch-up on the cover. So, well, you know, just kind of minutia, just, you know, sort of rejuvenating it a little bit, and uh, that was pretty important. At one point, um, uh, Mrs. Hample, who works uh, in, in charge of the autograph and photograph uh, division, she asked, she came up to me with a... Uh, uh, a packet of about 100, 150 shards of paper saying she thought it was a letter by Thomas Jefferson. So for a week, <laughs> I took every little shard and pieced it back together, and it turned out to be a rather important letter by Thomas Jefferson to a preacher friend of his uh, named Jacob Boardman, I think. And the letter was expressing Jefferson's views on separation of church and state really clearly, especially specifically, how um, the clergy should stay out of judicial matters. So it's a pretty important American document. Wow. And your mom was right. It was a letter <sighs> by Jefferson. And um, uh, that was one of the you know, highlights of me working here, was working on that letter. And I'll never forget it. It's great. Wow. And so those are just a few examples. Yeah. The map room was started in the 1960s, and it, it's very much like being inside the internet, <laughs> because we have every subject, every region, every state, and maps of the sea and the sky and the world. Most people browse by region, but when they don't know what to do, when they don't know what to look for, I usually send them to this folder, which is world maps. And the reason why this folder is so interesting is because you can see an alternative projection, very affordable 18th century alternative projection for $100, or you can also see an alternative projection for $12,000. So I like to show people the variety, this map here. That's $12,000? This is $12,000, and I like to show that you can get something for $100 that's very special and rare and interesting. You can also get something for $12,000 that's very special and rare and interesting. We like to show the variety up here. It's not just 
things that you're getting on a silver platter brought to you by some concierge and white gloves. It's, it's, it's a discovery within each folder and that's what makes our store unique. It's, it's, it's the variety of price, subject matter, rarity and, and just for uh, just in general um, it, you discover your own items. You don't just Google it and come in and buy it. You, you literally have to discover it on your own coming through the folder. So I think that's what we what makes us stand out. Um, so this is kind of a funny thing of a, a, a an early team and they all have beards. That was the kind of it's a rare broadside where they're just I don't know why but it's the uh, Baseball's attraction. They, they try, are they allowed to have beards now? I don't even know. But if this is there are a couple teams that have no facial hair rules. The Yankees being one of them. Yeah, and then a lot of these are sheets from old magazines that are just featuring various players. Like I don't know who these people are. These are the uh, champion. Oh, nine. Galvin. Yeah, Pud Galvin. You've heard of them? Sure. Well, that guy. These are woodcuts. Yeah, the Atlantic Baseball Club. Wait, Brooklyn. Chapman? That couldn't be Ray Chapman. No, he was See, this is what happens with baseball. Yeah. Very, people know a lot about it and they can relate to all these figures. They're very formal portraits. Most people want action. They want to see prints of a game. I mean, it, it, it's hard to imagine, but this is before they had gloves. They didn't even have gloves. Look, Correct. they had to just catch it. It must have been... The balls weren't as hard back then, but It must yeah. have been painful. Oh, so it was a different kind of ball. No helmets, no gloves. Yeah, look at that. And this is very cute because it shows you the scene, like where they would have played and the style of the bats. They look handmade. Mm -hmm. This is from 1874. So we do, we try to have uh, sports, but often, you know, the, the sports we have the most of are not that trendy anymore. Like we have a, a folder called walking or pedestrians people used to in manhattan walk as a sport in indoors and people would watch it was a spectator sport Can you imagine they're like i'm walking i have a whole folder of that it's very really? strange yeah so so um, what other sports you have a whole football folder yes we have football i think there's two images in there oh it's basketball it, it, um basketball tennis. no i only have one Tennis, we have many. Um, golf, a whole bunch. Golf, we have an excellent selection. Um, oh, lacrosse, I'm sorry to say, is sold out. Not great. This is a reproduction, but it's it's painted in by an artist. And it's kind of nice because it shows the, the fans and the action. He, again, he's got no, like, he doesn't even wear anything. Nope. I guess they didn't back then. Same with this. This is a vintage reproduction, very affordable. Love it. And sort of a bird's eye view of the grounds. Yeah, it's super fun. Um, some fine points of the national game. It's kind of a caricature. <laughs> yeah. Up here on the fourth floor, third and fourth floors are mostly storage and office space, but we have a lot of rare books up here, and this is maybe my favorite spot in the whole building. This is one of the rare book rooms, um, and this little nook in the back is the cutest spot you've ever seen. So come on all the way back here and you will see what I'm talking about. Is this adorable or what? You wanna get away from everybody and just sit here and relax? Well, you can't, because this is employees only, but sometimes I actually come here and I'll just eat a sandwich or read a book and chill out for a bit. So I think I might just borrow this book. Um, it's $4,000. Maybe just do a little light reading on the subway home. Oh man, I don't know, this is tricky. This is tricky. Oh. Hogarth, a uh, English painter who died in 1764. Yeah, this thing weighs about 30 pounds. <laughs> I do think it would be pretty awesome, though, to, to pull this out on the subway and it would, like, you know, overlap the people, like, two, two people on either side of me. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know if this is the biggest book in the store, but it's definitely the biggest that I can ever remember seeing. Just to give you an idea of the quantity of stuff that we have in this building, uh, you see all these boxes behind me. These all have, just grab a random one, all kinds of pamphlets and papers. This is one box. Um, pull out the first one and it's going to be something old. Published in 1866. Annual Discourse Before the Massachusetts Medical Society. A bargain at $25. So Money. it's just one thing. Money for an ex-leper. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't. <laughs> it's just one one item in one box out of hundreds of boxes in various rooms on various floors. So you can see where I get my collecting skills from.
inside another rare book storage room right now and space is so limited that a lot of these shelves are double stacked with books. You can see right over here, books in front, books in the back. Everything's in the computer. Everything has its right spot on the shelf. So working here, it's like being on a constant scavenger hunt. Kind of fun. I got to get this guy in the video. This is Byron who has worked at the Argosy since 1982. I was like this tall. And if you've ever won one of my Twitter contests or won a charity prize and had something sent to you from the bookstore, this is the guy that packs it. So, thank right. you, my man. You're I, welcome, sir. I hope we're gonna be working here together for the next 30 years at least. Okay. Up here on the fifth floor, two popular destinations. This is the first one. It's the first editions room, which is actually run by my aunt, Judy. We have about 5,000 books here, mostly English and American, mostly 20th century, of authors that are collected. And they range from Dickens to John Updike from late 19th century to late 20th century. And a lot of them are ordinary looking books, but people collect them as first editions. That's $2,000. Oh, and it's signed by Stephen King? Yeah. And this is a pop-up book. It has illustrations. There's Neptune <laughs> riding the waves. Very dramatic. And you can see a book that has pieces like this. Uh, it doesn't um, hold up too long, especially with children reading it. And that's why this is $850 instead of the dollar and a half it cost when it was new in 1933. Wow. Thanks. This is the other cool spot on the fifth floor, the Americana department. Loads of history, every American state, presidents, different modes of transportation, some sports, chess, horse racing, you name it. There's stuff up here for everyone. All right, guys, we've made it to the top floor, the autograph department. This actually might be one of the only unsigned things we have up here, but it's one of my favorites. It's an entire uncut sheet of 1981 Fleer baseball cards. And uh, I'm up here with my mom, who actually started this department in what year? 1982. Yeah, and we like to call this the Oh My God Room because why? That's... Well, whenever the door opens and people walk in for the first time, I often hear that. Oh, my God because it's so many people on the walls anything so from much what to see. presidents to athletes musicians lawyers doctors movie, movie stars everything yeah. yeah every possible walk of life a lot of framed stuff a lot of unframed stuff mm -hmm. hundreds maybe even more than a thousand signed books up here right um, a lot of it is cataloged a lot of it you just have to kind of poke around on the walls and see what jumps out at you so yeah pretty pretty special spot up here right check this out i have found the single oldest item in this building. This is a real estate document from Paris from the year 1342. Look at this thing. That is pretty awesome. Here's something else which I just think is almost unbelievable. Abner Doubleday, you know the guy who was rumored to have invented baseball? Well, he was a Civil War general. So there's this thing here, which is his actual original marriage certificate, okay, from the year, uh, <laughs> the year of our Lord, 1852. Abner Doubleday's marriage certificate. And this right here, which is very fragile, is his actual medicine kit from when he was in the field in the Civil War. So you open this up and you can see little vials of different powders and medicines. There's sulfur and, I mean, <laughs> opium. I don't know how in the world we got this. Abner Doubleday's actual stuff, but there it is. Here's something else that's kind of fun. A full one-page handwritten letter from George Washington in the year 1761 about a cockfight. So I happen to know that the sports ones are over here. And uh, in particular, there's a lot of baseball ones on this side. So uh, Christy Mathewson, Joe DiMaggio, my boy A-Rod is down in the corner. 
Got a whole album here of signed first day covers, basically commemorative envelopes, all baseball. You know, Jim Palmer, Joe Pepitone, Gaylord Perry, Lou Pinella, Boog Powell, and uh, a whole album of miscellaneous sports. You got the baseball, the basketball, boxing, ton of boxers up here, football, tennis, etc. And boxes of baseballs, a lot of Hall of Famers, Stan Musial, Mickey Mantle, a ball signed by five different Yankees, including Jeets. So there is so much stuff in this store, and one of the challenges is to get it all cataloged and on the internet. So basically, endless work, but it's fun work for sure. Well, this little tour of the bookstore ended up lasting a lot longer than I expected. Hope you enjoyed it. Just wanted to say goodbye with my mom, Naomi, and her two sisters, my aunts, Judy and Adina. So they are the ones who run it, the bookstore ladies. And if you come visit the store, there's a good chance you'll see one or all of them. So thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you.